When it comes to hybrid electric vehicles, Honda has long been considered a pioneer in the industry. However, if you were looking to buy a fully dedicated battery electric car, experimental cars like the Fit EV and Clarity EV have simply left a lot of consumers wanting. However, for 2024, Honda is looking to get serious with the introduction of this vehicle. This is the brand new 2024 Honda Prologue, the brand's first ever fully dedicated battery electric SUV. And with up to 300 miles of all electric range, available front or dual motor all wheel drive and an all new EV architecture, this is supposed to be Honda's entry into the fast growing all electric SUV space. So as you can see today, we're actually out here at a studio just outside of Detroit, Michigan. And now that we're finally seeing the all new Prologue in person, let's go ahead and take a first look. So even though this vehicle is built off of a fully dedicated battery electric architecture, you guys probably have assumed this is actually built off of the same GM Altium battery electric platform that also underpins vehicles like the Chevrolet Equinox EV, the Chevrolet Blazer EV. Honda essentially decided to partner with General Motors as they prepare their own fully dedicated EV architecture, which should be launching sometime in 2025. However, this vehicle here will be going on sale in early 2024, and it's essentially just the first step in Honda's fully electric uh, portfolio. And as you can see from the design of this vehicle, it looks nothing like uh, a General Motors vehicle like a Chevrolet Equinox EV. The front end, I think Honda has done a really great job with the overall design of this vehicle. First of all, this color is called North Shore Pearl. It's a very beautiful kind of turquoise color that's supposed to be inspired by the views that you find around Lake Tahoe. The vehicle itself was designed at a design studio for Honda in California. And you can see this particular one that I'm showing you here is the Elite trim. It's the top of the line. There's an EX, a Touring, and an Elite trim. And you can see with this color, with the fact that it doesn't actually have a grill. It just kind of has this black piece here uh, with the, the Honda logo. And then you can see here, all prologues come standard with full LED headlights. You can see it's the uh, reflector style LEDs with an LED daytime running light, LED turn signals. You do get LED fog lights down here along with some functional vents, some active grill shutters. But overall, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think of the design. I think Honda really nailed it. This is a, a attractive and handsome looking uh, SUV. Now let's go ahead and talk about the powertrain specs. Now I can't open up the hood for you, but Honda did confirm that there is no frunk, which doesn't surprise me. The uh, ZDX, the Act Acura version essentially doesn't also have a frunk, but this vehicle here in the US will launch with uh, two motor options. It'll have a single motor front wheel drive, uh, which will be the base version. That'll be standard on the EX and the Touring. However, on the Elite trims, option on the other trims will be a dual motor system, which means it adds an electric motor to the rear of the vehicle. Uh, and it'll give you, Honda says, around 288 horsepower, 313 pound-feet of torque. Those numbers are pretty similar to what General Motors also introduced on the Equinox EV, which I believe makes around uh, 290 horsepower. Honda didn't have any horsepower or torque ratings for the front-wheel drive version yet, but if you look at the Equinox EV, that has around 210 horsepower and 242 pound-feet of torque. So I suspect it'll be similar. They also weren't ready to talk about zero to 60 times, but I suspect it'll be just under six seconds. The vehicle itself has an 85 kilowatt-hour battery pack. So again, the battery is smaller, about almost 20 kilowatts smaller versus the battery pack on the ZDX. But despite the smaller battery, this vehicle here should be able to do up to 300 miles of range on a full charge. That's for the single motor front drive variant. So again, very competitive range figures, and it'll also have very competitive charging uh, figures. Now moving around the side profile of the vehicle, you can see the Prologue is kind of a mid-size two-row SUV, which is interesting because Honda is now gonna have two mid-size SUVs, this and the Passport as well, which we're expecting an all new version of that for 2025. This also has the longest wheelbase that Honda has ever put on a production vehicle at 121.8 inches long. This is actually a longer wheelbase than the Honda Odyssey minivan, if you can believe it. Its overall length is around 192 inches long. This is about eight inches longer than a Honda CRV, and it's also around five inches wider. This vehicle is around 78 and a half inches wide. So it's gonna have a lot of interior space uh, because of that long wheelbase and just the width of this vehicle. Now you can see the wheels. Uh, this Elite trim comes standard with a 21 inch wheel. You can see this is the biggest wheel that Honda has ever put on an actual production car, I believe. And you can see the design of the wheel also is interesting with the machine outside with the inner black inner spokes. It also, if you notice, has a six lug design. I don't think I've ever seen a Honda with a six lug design, but remember this is a dedicated EV. So it's probably heavy. It's probably the fact that General Motors also put a six lug design. You have an all independent suspension. I don't have actual ground clearance uh, just yet, but you can see with the black painted wheel arch trim, it's definitely a really handsome looking vehicle. And I especially love how the wheels are kind of pushed out into the corners. It just gives it a more premium uh, look to it. Now, the charge port door is actually located right here on the passenger fender or the driver's side fender. You can see 
this one's a really early pre-production car, so open that up. You can see it has the standard CCS combo plug. However, Honda did say that they will be adopting the NAC plug for the 2025 model year, uh, but this vehicle should be able to accept a maximum of 155 kilowatts on a DC fast charger. So that's not quite as fast as the 200 kilowatts, I believe, on the Acura ZDX. Honda says if you're plugged into a level three, you should be able to add around 65 miles of range in just 10 minutes. So relatively competitive charging times, faster than something like the BZ4X, and along the lines of the Volkswagen ID4 and the Ford Mustang Mach-E. Like I said earlier, 300 miles of range. This all-wheel drive version should be in the upper 200 mile of range, um, which, which is still very, very competitive. Now you can see the Elite trim has these black painted side mirrors with the integrated turn signals. There's also a panoramic sunroof, which actually opens up and it has a retractable shade. That's gonna be standard on the touring trims and up. Uh, there's also these really aerodynamic, sleek, low profile roof rails. Uh, and you can really see uh, the boxy square profile. This vehicle is really attractive. I especially love it with this color. Uh, this color right now is gonna be exclusive to the Prologue. And then moving around to the rear of the vehicle, you can see it also has an equally conservative but handsome design. You can see there's a full length or full LED taillight design. It's got the new Honda logo here, which as you can see, they've done away with the H logo. And instead they have it spelled out with this new uh, script, which Honda says every EV is going to get that new script. You can see it also has a lot of other badging like the Prologue Elite. There's a new hybrid E badge here, which we saw this badge on uh, the Honda E and other markets. And I believe the Acura ZDX has a, a, their own version of the badge. There's an all wheel drive badge here. And then you can see down here on the lower rear bumper, I like the kind of contrast with the color, with the black trim, with the silver trim. This vehicle also will tow. Honda has a maximum of 1500 pounds. So not quite as much as the ZDX, but remember it's got a smaller battery pack, less power, but at least it still is able to tow. Obviously no exhaust tips because this is an all electric car. Now looking at the cargo area, Honda actually said that uh, they have cargo figures for us already. Now for being such a big vehicle on the outside, I will say that the cargo area isn't as big as I expected it to be. Because remember, this vehicle is the same size as the Passport, but remember, they are completely different architectures. You have just over 25 cubic feet of total storage space here. This isn't available with a third row, which is still a very usable amount. There's also this massive hidden floor st or underfloor storage area, which you can see, that's a very deep storage compartment there. So that's great for hiding you know, stuff or putting your mobile charger. There's no spare tire. Honda says it'll just have a repair kit. Now, if you fold down the second row seats, Honda says it'll expand it out to just over 57 cubic feet of space, which is still a pretty usable amount, but you should know that something like the CRV technically offers a little bit more cargo space compared to the Prologue. So now that we've finished talking about the exterior styling of the new Prologue, let's go ahead and hop inside the interior and show you guys all of the tech features. Now, unfortunately, this is the area of the Prologue, which will remind you of General Motors, which could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how you feel about GM. As I get in and shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk. Remember, this is built off of a fully dedicated EV architecture. Now, this Elite trim that I'm showing you definitely has some nice touches. I love the blue, ex the turquoise exterior uh, paired up with this kind of two-tone light gray and black leather interior. This is included, of course, with the Elite. Honda says there'll be a, to a choice of three different interior color combinations. I suspect probably black, this gray, and perhaps a brown. And then there's also gonna be seven exterior colors. So uh, this Elite trim is the most expensive and fully loaded version of the Prologue. However, you don't have to get the Elite to get the uh, 11 inch display. So you have an 11 inch touchscreen here in the center. This is the first Honda SUV to have Google built into the infotainment software. This is pretty similar, of course, to what we saw in the new Accord. And then there's also an 11 inch screen here in the instrument panel. It's gonna be standard equipment, like I said earlier, on the EX and above trims, which it starts at EX. You can see the steering wheel also. Looks like a General Motors steering wheel, but you can see it has the Honda logo here. A lot of the buttons and switch gear is clearly GM. You can see the turn signal stocks, wiper stocks, the transmission selector is here on the actual uh, steering column. And then the materials, you can see this is a very early pre-production car, but there is some soft touch materials here. Uh, chrome accent or metal accented door handles. You have two person memory seats. The seats adjust in also eight different ways with a four way lumbar adjustment, which is nice. So 12 different ways. The window controls, you can see windows for the front are one touch up down. For the rear, they're one touch down, but not one touch up. You can see again, all General Motors switch gear, which is a good or a bad thing, depending on how you feel about GM. Now, I'm not gonna be able to show you guys the software. This is actually just like an overlay, a sticker to show what it's supposed to look like. Eventually we'll be able to drive this vehicle. Uh, that'll be a final production car. 
that'll have the latest software. It will include wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and over-the-air updates. That's something that General Motors is removing, but it's nice to see that Honda is kind of sticking with that. Uh, however, if you guys look at the screen size of this vehicle at 11 inches, it's a good size. However, the Equinox EV actually offers a 17-inch display. So I'm not entirely sure why Honda isn't offering the biggest displays, but I think this size is definitely nice. The dashboard here you can see has a soft touch material. This is actually leather on the dash, which feels nice. This upper portion is soft touch. The Elite trims also include, I believe, an eight inch heads up display, which is also a great touch as well. You have a Bose premium stereo system, uh, which should sound good for all you audiophiles out there. And then over here on the center console, you can see big area, I assume for a wireless phone charging pad. Again, this is not a final pre-production car, so don't uh, mistake this for being production with some of the materials that you see. And the one thing I do want to mention, however, is when I push this button here, That is the GM bong. Now I was told by Honda that that software should be changed. They're about 99% sure that you'll actually, they'll actually change out the software to include Honda uh, chimes in the vehicle. So we'll have to wait until we actually get a full production car to show that. You can see over here, there's actually your wireless phone charging pad. So this area here will just be kind of a storage compartment. This is, again, reminds me of General Motors. You have a nice padded center console over here. And then if you open this up, you can see it's actually a pretty deep storage area, which is nice. And then your USB ports are gonna be found here along with your actual power outlet. The seats are pretty comfortable and supportive. They don't have the same sporty feel, obviously, as that ZDX Type S that we saw about two weeks ago. But again, I like the look of the seats. They are going to be heated and ventilated, of course, on the upper trims. Although for some reason, this model here isn't showing an actual cooled seat button. I only see a heated seat button, but you do have dual zone climate control, which is nice. You have a glove compartment here, which is not damped. Um, but it is a bin style. It offers a good amount of storage. There's a piano black plastic trim here. And then you can see above me here, massive panoramic glass roof, which is included on the touring trims and up. It also includes a retractable shade and it also opens up over the two front seats, uh, which is nice. There will be a little bit of ambient lighting that I saw, although we'll have to wait until we get one for, uh, for a week to test to see what it looks like in, at night. But overall, you can see it feels roomy. It has great tech features in it. And you know, for a pre-production car, I think the build quality is also great. It also doesn't quite smell like a GM vehicle like it did, like we noticed in the ZDX. So again, kind of a good thing or a bad thing. It, it feels like Honda has done a lot here to make this interior feel a little bit uh, more like a Honda as opposed to a GM. But let's go ahead and hop into the back seat of the car and show you guys the space. Now, this car being a midsize SUV with no third row, uh, it does offer a fairly good amount of space. Now, I don't have final legroom figures just yet, but um, once you get back here and shut the door, you can see for somebody, this is where I have the seat to drive. Um, for somebody my height at five foot seven, there is a ton of legroom space, good footroom space. There's also decent headroom space as well, though I suspect if you're over six foot, this isn't going to get, start getting a little bit close because of that panoramic glass roof, uh, which does in, eat into the headroom space. Hard touch plastic materials back here, although again, this is very early pre-production. You can see there's some of the ambient lighting uh, in the actual door panel here. I don't think you can change the color, but it's nice that they kind of give you that accent. Um, there's some rear seat air vents over here. There's a big bin here, which I suspect could have been a separate third zone climate, but this model here doesn't have it. There's two more USB charging ports and actual power outlet here, which is nice. You have two storage cubbies. There's floors there is also, also completely flat, which is nice. And then these seats, you can see the seats, they also, they obviously fold down to get, expand the cargo capacity. Uh, however, if you want, you can actually uh, recline the seat slightly. So there's one latch position and then there's a little bit more of a reclined latch position. So it's nice that they kind of give you that little, you know, uh, touch, you can see, fold this down. There's an armrest with two cup holders. So overall, if you plan to use this as a family vehicle, this definitely offers, I believe, similar or a little bit more space versus the CRV. But I believe something like the Passport is gonna offer even more space, especially when you're talking about the headroom space. So we've been waiting a long time for Honda to give us a fully dedicated battery electric vehicle with competitive range. And after seeing the all new 2024 Prologue in person, I have to say, I really like the overall package that Honda is offering here. I think the Prologue is the right size. I think it has really handsome styling. It has a lot of great tech features on the inside. It should have enough power with nearly 300 horsepower. And again, up to 300 miles of all electric range puts it near the higher end of the segment. Now, obviously you guys, you guys know the company partnered with GM to develop this vehicle, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It could be a good thing. It's definitely gonna help with keeping the cost down for this vehicle, because if you're looking to get your hands on the all new Prologue, it should be going on sale sometime in the early part of 2024. And Honda basically said in terms of pricing, it should start in the upper $40,000 range. Now the upper $40,000 range would probably put it in the maybe 46, 47, $48,000 range. That is gonna be before the $7,500 federal tax credit, because as you guys know, this vehicle is going to be built in North America at a GM 
OEM factory, so it should qualify for that tax credit when it goes on sale. I don't have any final pricing, of course, of this Elite trim, but if I had to estimate, I'd probably say the Elite trim would come close to the upper $50,000 range, expect to spend about $10,000 more. Again, that's before the tax credit, before you know, the special lease rates that you could probably take advantage of. And it should also put it right in line with a lot of its competitors, because as you guys know, this will compete with vehicles like the Ford Mustang Mach-E, the Tesla Model Y, the Hyundai Ioniq 5, the Kia EV6. It definitely has a unique look to it, competitive range, uh, decent power, a good amount of interior space and great tech features. And for those of you who have been waiting a long time for a Honda EV, if you want if you want to wait a little bit longer, there will be a fully dedicated Honda developed platform coming in 2025. But if you guys are okay with the fact that they are, again, sharing with uh, General Motors here for the development costs, I think the new 2024 Prologue is certainly worth a look. But with all that said, hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the brand new 2024 Honda Prologue. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.